Welcome to Monk's Take. Welcome to Monk's Take, everybody. This is the quarantine edition. We're giving our first crack at doing a video podcast. So we are joined today uh, by Kelsey McNamara, Ian Malikas, and my sidekick, Megan Dunlap. I'm Corey McCarthy. I'm your host. Uh, thanks for uh, taking some time to join us. Uh, Kelsey and Ian, you have a pretty cool story to tell, and maybe some of our viewers know, but you just recently, a couple weeks ago, came back from England, uh, having played uh, basketball overseas while going to college and, and uh, pursuing your master's. Um, both went to Oxford Brooks, a pretty prestigious school. Uh, Kelsey, um, I'll start with you. Just kind of talk about the process and, and how you, you know, ended up over there. Was it something you guys kind of worked on together to go to the same place or, you know, what was the, uh, the situation? Yeah, um, we both had kind of like wanted to do it, but like, I mean, I'm probably speaking for him, but Ian had a job and then I had a plan to go to Merrimack to get my master's. So we both kind of had other plans, but then kind of decided that this would be a lot more fun and an adventure and being able to play basketball. So we looked into it together for the most part and kind of thought that it would be best to go to the same school so we could be together and experience everything with each other. Very cool. Yeah, Ian, same kind of thing. I mean, she's, she said, you know, she's speaking for you, but um, you had a job and everything, but this was just a, an opportunity too good to pass up, I imagine. Yeah, I mean, well, at St. Joe's, I always wanted to study abroad. That's something that I've always thought about, but um, with basketball being a two-semester sport, um, that was never really an option. So, um, yeah, I just felt like this was the perfect opportunity, and why not do it now? Awesome. So what was it like for you guys when you first got over there? I mean, I don't know how worldly you are. I've never been, I've been to Canada a couple of times, but I've never been like truly out of the country. Had either of you? I hadn't. No, I had only been to Canada before that. Okay. So what, what was that like going to a new country? Obviously they speak the same language, but still, you know, it's gotta be very different. Yeah, we were just, I don't know, at the beginning, we were definitely adjusting to it with the little differences and it felt overwhelming at first, but. It was probably good you guys had each other to lean on when, it, when that kind of stuff came up, right? Like, uh, I don't know, which, which one of you were more prepared? Which was the, uh, the support person more often than not out of the two of you? I would say I, would, I was a little bit more prepared. I, I don't think Kelsey knew what the the UK was until we were like a week from going. So <laughs> well, people would ask me, they're like, where are you going? And I'm like, Europe. And they're like, oh, what part? I'm like, uh, England. <laughs> and they're like, oh, I, I didn't know anything. <laughs> I'm very sheltered. <laughs> uh, you're not alone. I mean, I... I always Google things to make sure I'm not going to make a mistake. So I Googled it just to make sure that I, that I was right, you know, so <laughs> yeah, I wasn't going to say anything stupid, but. Were you guys like able to travel and explore like more of Europe though, like outside of England? Yeah. Uh, we ended up being able to take uh, one decent trip. We uh, went, it was a, it was actually a, amazing trip but we went to uh rome venice uh munich and prague and we also went to amsterdam and all that was great um just because of the coronavirus we actually had a bunch of trips planned for the end of the year because we would have been done by basketball at that time um but unfortunately obviously with everything going on in the world that didn't work out so you guys went to some countries where they don't speak our language. Yes. Yeah. It, it, and that has to be very challenging. I can't imagine. I know. Uh, we actually did a like, really good job with it, surprisingly. Yeah. Do you have like a little like Google Translator or, or things like that? Or you carry around a lot of translating type books? Or <laughs> Luckily, we we're mostly in pretty touristy areas. So you can get by with English. I mean, most people understand what you're trying to say. Yeah. True. That makes sense. So, yeah, you saw some pretty cool places. I, I know you guys posted some pictures on social media and we saw that. And 
So, that, yeah, that had to be cool. just, yeah, very cool. It, did you ever imagine that that would be something you'd be doing? Like, you're, were you just kind of like, you know, caught up in it and, and it was just a crazy experience? I mean, I never had really been huge wanting to like travel at all. I kind of was always a homebody. So it was definitely something that I wouldn't expect for myself. But I think when we were there, we were really taking it all in, especially even just where we were living. Like Oxford was such a beautiful historical place. Like when we first got there, we walked around and just were like in awe by everything. It was like really cool. Awesome. As far as like Oxford, like how was the academic setting like compared to SJC? Like difficulty or class size, like things like that? For myself, it was definitely a much different experience from St. Joe's. Uh, a lot of my classes were 100 plus students, um, which I think my biggest class at St. Joe's was maybe around 50. Um, and then uh, a lot of the coursework that they have over there, uh, the assignments is more like academic articles and literary reviews where I felt the knowledge I learned at St. Joe's was much more practical and you didn't have to know like the exact theory for everything. But I mean, we just more teach the general knowledge of business, but it was good. Yeah, my class size was small. <laughs> I think just because education is such like a I don't know. It was a smaller section of the school. So, and especially mine being leadership and management, I only had like eight to 10 people in my classes, which was kind of similar to St. Joe's. Wow. Very different experiences, even between the two of you over there. That's very interesting. I have heard that the large class size is uh, definitely a thing. Um, but I guess it depends on what major you're, you're going into and what you're pursuing your master's in. So Kelsey, uh, educational leadership and management and Ian Business Management Finance. Um, so where are you guys with, I assume you have one more year left, is that right? Till September, we'll finish in September. It was a one like full year program for both That's of us. That works, that's not yeah. bad. Um, so how is that working? Are you like everybody else in the United States taking online courses now to, to wrap things up or how is that happening? Right now, I think, I can speak for both of us that we uh, we only have assignments left for our courses, which isn't bad to close out the second semester, but we both are yet to write our dissertations, which uh, I don't think either one of us are looking forward to. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> well, talk about that. What What is the requirement for that? Uh, it's 20,000 words and you have to conduct your own research study. So you have to come up with like your own topic, your own research question, and then do like a whole literary review with it and then do your whole actual research and collect data and everything. So it's definitely going to be a long summer working on that. That sounds like fun. That's Megan's worst nightmare. 20,000 words. <laughs> yeah, that sounds terrible. <laughs> Maybe you can do something cool with it, everyone having to virtually learn now. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to be fun no matter what. <laughs> you guys already have topics picked for for that. Yeah. What What do you have? <laughs> oh boy. Ian, you can say yours. I'm doing mine on the critical success factors of English grocery stores entering into the U U.S. market. Exciting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and foods involved, so that's cool. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Mine is going to be, I haven't officially came up with my question yet, but it's going to be something relating to how teachers view principals, um, leadership styles versus like how the principal views their own leadership styles and kind of comparing that. Cool. Yeah. Well, it's very, you know, practical and application and um, hopefully you'll at least find it interesting while you're doing it. It applies to what you want to do after you graduate and, what, and that leads to my next question like what is the goal for you for each of you uh, the job that you want to have when you're done go ahead girls <laughs> well i am just starting to look to apply for jobs um teaching jobs for next year so like elementary school that starts in september 
So wow. the process kind of just started for applying. So I've been keeping my eye out, but um, I'll most likely end up in Maine. That's what I'm thinking. All right. Yeah. Yeah, and then I actually accepted a job about a month ago from um, Chinbro. Um, it's a construction company. I'm going to be in their financial le financial leadership development program. Um, it's a rotate. It's a three year rotational program. So during my three years, I'll be um, in four or five different job functions, and then hopefully that'll land to something within the company. Um, that I find interest in during that time. That's great. That's up in your area, up in the Auburn area? <clears throat> uh, my first year is in Portland, but my second year will be in their corporate office in Pittsfield. Oh, wow. Oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of goes backwards is what you might think. Yeah. In the corporate <laughs> setting. Well, awesome. Congratulations on that, you guys. That's, that's very cool. And happy to hear Kelsey's coming back to Maine. That's good. <laughs> yeah Me too. Get, get enough. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess maybe kind of bury the lead a little bit here and talking about you guys um, for those of you who don't know listening that you know Kelsey and Ian were very accomplished basketball players at St. Joseph's College um, both multiple all-conference uh, I won't go too far into Kelsey's accolades because I don't want to embarrass Ian <laughs> but both thousand point scorers, uh, both really, really good players. Um, and so you guys go overseas to play basketball and you both played on two different teams over there. Um, how did that come about? Like the way college works here, you're playing on your school team mm. and, and you go overseas and you're playing on two different teams at two different levels. And, you know, how, how does that work? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really different because they have university league teams, which is what like the university, anyone who is um, taking classes there can play on the university league team. And then they have national league teams that are normally affiliated with the university, but sometimes not. But basically national league teams, like anyone can try out for and make, if you make the team, then you're on the team. But it's not like how NCAA, you're only allowed four years of eligibility. I had girls on my National League team that were in their 30s. Like they were just, they just never stopped playing basketball. So it's kind of cool in that way because you were, you're able to keep playing where here, like once you graduate college, your career's kind of over. But so yeah, that's how like the dynamic worked with having two teams for both of us. So for those players that were a little older, were they still in school or were they just... You know, no, they had like real, real person, adult jobs, real lives, like we're married and just yeah. kept playing basketball. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. And Ian, how about you, like your experience on playing two different teams and probably mirrors what Kelsey's talking about, but what do you have to add? Yeah, uh, I was fortunate enough that our school sponsored a men's National League team. So I played for our school team and our school sponsored National League team. Um, whereas Kelsey, they didn't have a women's National League team, so she played for a different area. But it was, it was good. Um, we had, I mean, some of the same players, but the National League team definitely, like I had a 30-year-old that was probably – our, our second or third best player on the team. So it was good. It was, the National League was a good level of competition. It was comparable to St. Joe's. So was there, did you guys have to do like tryouts or how did that, like how would you like selected or could anyone play? How did that? They kind of love Americans, just like the stereotype of us being good basketball players. So we both kind of were just, already going there kind of having a reputation of being good before they even knew much about us <laughs> that's interesting mm. so kelsey you you also coached one of the teams yeah <laughs> right how how did that happen and and um it sounds like it's a pretty pretty cool thing which team did you end up coaching i coached the university league team which for the girls, the reason why I played on the National League team was because it was a lot higher level, which was more, which was similar to D3, like St. Joe's level. Um, but the University League team that I played on was a lot lower level. So I went there 
and um, the athletic director of the school basically was like, yeah, so we don't have a women's coach. So like, can you coach? Like right when I got there the first day and I was like, sure. <laughs> he was like, you'll be fine. Like the girls will all, cause they're younger. I mean, they're 18 to 20. So I was a little bit older than them. Um, and then they, he was just like, you'll be fine. And I was just like, okay, I got paid. So I was, I was good with it. Interesting. So what was that like coaching a team that you're playing on? I mean, probably not a lot of people could say that. Yeah, it was a little strange because I was friends with a lot of the girls. So like, um, I didn't want to like yell at them or say and like get mad at them when they were my friend, as well as the people, I, the players I was coaching. But we were lucky yeah, that me, I've seen a lot of your games. I know how much of a yeller you are. So I know that's <laughs> I mean, probably hard for you. <laughs> <laughs> when it really gets to me sometimes. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, we were lucky that we, I had a pretty like talented team and we were in the lower division. So we were actually really good. We won every game by like over 30 points. So oh. because of that, it made coaching really easy because I just did like equal playing time. Didn't really have to get mad at people because no matter, like it wasn't ever really close games. <laughs> That's not, how, how many players did you have in your team? We had 14 girls. Okay. Manageable number. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Ian, so I mean, you didn't coach your team, uh, no. but what, what was it like playing for a different coach and, and in a different league and, and uh, let, let's start off with your school league team and, and how that was. Did you guys, I, I know you told me um, the Brooks sponsored team. Well, I'm just going to let you answer the question because I wrote some stuff down and I can't read my own handwriting. So yeah. Um, yeah. No problem. Um, yeah. Both of both the teams I played for, uh, we had very good seasons. Um, the school team, we actually, lost the cup championship which is like their championship over there um but then the national league team which is like the the higher level team um we weren't able to do playoffs because of the coronavirus but we ended the league we had lost one game so we were regular season champions and then um just last week they announced that i had won league mvp that's awesome I think I saw that on, on social media, actually. Um, that's very cool. And uh, he was averaging like 30 points a game. <laughs> no kidding. So well-deserved of the award. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Well, that, now you, you spent your entire time in St. Joe's playing with like Darian, so now you finally got to shoot the ball, right? <laughs> exactly. With Darian and Jack, this is finally my time to do <laughs> <laughs> um, so how, how many games did you guys play for each team? I mean, it seems like you must have been playing almost every day or maybe um, maybe it wasn't that often. It was, it was definitely a lot of games. Um, I mean, we started the season uh, in late September when we first arrived there. And then the only difference between the NCAA and over there is we got like almost an entire month off for Christmas, which – I mean, at St. Joe's, I remember a couple of times we'd get like three or four days off for Christmas. Right. Um, and then we'd play another three months. So it was almost like two mini seasons with a month in between. Mm -hmm. I think we had like, because we played basically every Wednesday for our um, school league and then every Saturday for our national league team. So it was like two times a week for, I don't know, we probably had like, 30 games total with both teams, something around there. Okay, and it was spread out over a good amount of time, too, so it wasn't too too ridiculous. And no. was it, like, just games and no practices, or did you guys also practice? It was two times a week practice for, for me and for each team, so I had a little bit more, but um, just because I was in a different situation playing on two, like, totally separate teams – but yeah, nothing like seven days a week practicing. It was much more laid back in that sense of only having two practices a week. Did you guys get to see each other play at all? Or were you always play, playing on the same days? Um, the university league games, we would because we were at the same gym a lot of the times. Um, and then I actually had like a lot of um, 
afternoon games for my National League team. So normally I would make it back for like um, Ian's night games, but he didn't get to see much of my National League games. How was the travel for your games? Um, I had girls that were from like my town that we took cars to get to all the games. So it wasn't too bad. Oh, so it's kind of like, like almost AAU basketball where you're just kind of like driving yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. We, my team always took a van to each game, but it was normally like an hour and a half, two hour trips. Um, it was kind of cool. Like we were two hours and we had two teams in our league from Cardiff. So like I can check off and say that I've been to Wales, even though like, we were there for like a half hour. <laughs> it's like when you're in the United States and you're like, yeah, I've been to that state. I grew yeah. through it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> awesome. So the the level of play we've talked about, um, the national teams you played for was similar to D3. How about like, are there any sort of rules differences? I know the ball is different. It looks different. Um, and you know, how was the officiating and, and the coaching or any crazy stories about any of the games? Like the officiating is much lower than the United States. <laughs> don't yeah, get it. I don't know what tests you have to take, but they must not be very hard. <laughs> give me, give me an example of what that means. So the officiating just like I felt that every game was very inconsistent with how everything was called and then in my entire four-year career at St. Joe's I had never picked up a technical foul not one and I didn't pick up one in high school either so I had a clean slate going into this year I picked up seven technical fouls throughout the course of this season like if you look at them the wrong way they're quick to just toss you one they're not taking anything from anybody wow. you can't have a conversation nothing well, was that specific to you Ian or were there the guys on your team that were getting technicals too I mean I, I, I was a three-year captain at St. Joe's so I was I've been accustomed to being able to have a conversation with the ref and if you up and try to just ace for a call they'll throw you one right away <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kelsey how about you I can't imagine you got into technical trouble uh, no, I don't think I got technicals, but um, one thing that I remember about the refs was I was like coaching one of my university league teams. I decided not to play that game. And the um, this girl on the other team like started dribbling, picked up the ball and then took three steps before she passed it. Like so blatant, like stutter step, so many steps. And I was like, how, how is that not a travel? Like she literally just walked with the ball before she passed it. And the ref was like, oh no, you're allowed to take three steps before you pass the ball. And I was like, where did you hear that? Wow. Like it's just, just awful. Some of the things they would say, I'm like, I really don't think you're right with that, but they had the last say, so. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Well, like that's going to give some people some, uh, some perspective, I guess, about how everybody talks about officiating. And everybody complains about it no matter where you are. But that, you know, we don't see that. That's for sure. I know. <laughs> Kelsey, Kelsey's not mentioning that that game was when they beat Oxford University. So it's pretty cool to beat Oxford University in anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Smart kids. <laughs> that was a big rivalry over there. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Kelsey mentioned Ian scored, you know, average 30 points in the league in which you won the MVP. Um, any really big games that you can remember? I mean, Kelsey, you know, you had some really big games at St. Joe's. So did you, Ian, you know, the triple-double, all that kind of stuff. Um, but any really big games that you can remember? Um, Ian scored, like, 50 points in one game. <laughs> right? Yeah, we, we played. So the most memorable game for me was we played against um, this team from Cardiff, so in Wales, uh, they were the second best team in the league and we were both undefeated going into it. And it was probably the most physical basketball game I've ever been a part of. Um, just the, the talking back and forth and everything. I think there was, at the end of the game, there was seven technical fouls from <laughs> players and then their coach got two technical fouls and got thrown out of the game. And like, was it was 
mayhem, but we ended up winning, and that was a game I had like 53 or something. So take that one in the memory book. <laughs> that, that's kind of your style of game anyway, right? You, you know, you play physically, you always did. Yeah. Those so, Welch guys, though, they, they take pride in, <laughs> in playing physical. How about you, Kelsey? Um, I mean, I had a couple games that, I don't know. I not I don't know how to say this, but I definitely took it more a relaxed approach to basketball this year and really just kind of enjoyed it instead of like stressing myself out about it. Um, so I had some games that I would like score and do good. Some games that I would just like have like 10 or something points. But um, I mean, I think I was like on my National League team, the second leading score of my team. We had one girl who actually played D1 NCAA. Um, she's older now, but she was a big girl. She was a really good post player. Mm -hmm. um, so me and her worked like pretty well with each other in that way. But I really just tried to have fun, as much fun with it as I could. That's probably a really good plan. You want to talk about, uh, you know, you guys coming back to the United States and how that all came about in your newspaper. And we posted it on Go Monks, uh, you know, that you came back not that long ago. And it seemed like travel was pretty sketchy at that time. Yeah, I mean, we were, we really didn't want to come home. We were very hesitant to, um, but we lived in a very small apartment in where we were. And we knew that being like, if it did come to getting locked down in England, that living in that tiny apartment would be way worse than being at our houses. Um, so we kind of took that into consideration and then not knowing about how serious it was gonna get, we just made like a real quick decision and just said, we were gonna come home. Um, so we, I think on like Tuesday, we booked our flight for on Thursday. And we were so lucky that it was like one of the, last flights that didn't get canceled to New York. So we were, and then we had to fly to Boston, but we were very lucky with that. So you guys are pretty likely you're not going back or, I mean, I don't want to say it's definite, right? Cause we don't know. Nobody knows I know. uh, what, what, you know, the next week, month, six months are going to hold, but you, you guys took all your belongings and everything and came back. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, um, and, and your and your national league seasons were still going, so mm -hmm. that had to be disappointing. And just the fact that your new year experience was probably over—that's a—that's a bummer. That's a—that's a unfortunate way to end it. Corey's being all negative. I'm not, <laughs> Megan, you're the negative one. All right. <laughs> I'm, trying to get tears. One. I'm trying to get tears out of somebody on this. <laughs> My oh, moment. Okay. <laughs> no, it's true though. It was. I mean, I think it was for the best for us coming home. Yes, yeah, so you guys came back when? I think it's been a month. Okay. I don't remember the exact date. Yeah. It's a, it's, so now you guys are, you know, you're you're doing your classwork, and Ian, you're working. Yeah. And, and Kelsey, you're just like binging Netflix. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, I've actually been doing a lot of schoolwork, but I just finished my assignments today, so now I can just start truly binging Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> that's good you're ahead of the game in school work that's awesome yeah. so now you guys are you know you guys were in a small apartment and you were together all the time overseas and now you're now you're apart and you can't really see each other other than now I'm, you know look at this we we have the opportunity for you guys to see each other it's great it's great everything you want to say to each other but um so it's probably kind of you know very different that you know now you're like separated you're quarantined yeah, the, the first couple of weeks we got back, Kelsey actually had to quarantine at uh, my house because she lives with her grandmother and she didn't want to put her at risk or anything. But yeah, times have been tough the last couple of weeks. <laughs> Good thing for technology, right? Yeah. I don't know where we'd be without it. <laughs> I think the hardest part is like we were living on our own for so long and doing everything by ourselves. And now like both of our families are back home doing everything for us. It feels kind of weird. Like when we were at Ian's house, his mom would cook us all the food. Now I'm home and my parents are cooking me all the food. It's definitely nice, but I kind of liked being on my own too. Yeah. My mom spoils me more than Kelsey. 
Well, Ian, <laughs> Ian, I could see with all the uh, the cookware hanging from the rafters there, your mother must be quite the cook. Oh yeah. She spoils him so much. <laughs> oh man, you're gonna put on the quarantine twenty, buddy. <laughs> uh, but I've been telling everyone, I'm like, guys, we're all gonna gain the quarantine fifteen. It's just gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it. Uh, um, but guys, thanks so much for taking some time. I think this went pretty well. I know you had a great experience over there. Thanks for sharing your memories and, and your experiences with us. Yeah, thank you guys. Yeah, thank yeah, you. All right. Thank you, Megan. All right, everybody. This has been Monk's Take Quarantine Edition, our first ever video podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot. <laughs>